Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show, and look who's here. Bonnie Bernstein. You look great. You always look great. Bonnie always I looks fantastic. I took a shower for you. Oh, thank you. Oh. I'm that kind of girl. I did as well. That's great. <laughs> what the, now, you guys, now, you were in the NFL for seven years. You all had to have a crush on Bonnie Bernstein, right? Uh, yeah, I think Raiders. I mean, everybody had to. No. I, yeah, probably. I think so. Back. Because uh... really, what else is going to say to answer that question when you're asking it on the air? <laughs> <laughs> now, we all thought she was a dog. I, but, yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's a safe question to ask. I mean, come on. I mean, well, this guy. No, Bonnie for, was. Never heard, about st- never heard about steroids, this guy. I don't know. No, I didn't pay attention to who was doing the steroids. I. I was not doing steroids. I assume steroids. guys weren't. You were not. But Bonnie was, she the was. The rumors aren't true. No. Right. She was out there doing a lot of football stuff Just when I was playing Just because I stepped I up my football. game in 2006 doesn't mean I took anything. To- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the stats go way up for your interviewing and uh, you and Pam Oliver. Pam Oliver. I didn't have any coaches ditch me that year at halftime. <laughs> well, Pam Oliver, Pam Oliver got heavy. Oh she my claimed, God. It was preg- claimed it was pregnancy, but I think it's steroids. Pam Oliver got beamed in the she face. She got Nailed. What happened? What? Last night. Oh, she I thought that's what you were gonna bring up. No, yeah, I the, bring up that she got the fat. Colts Giants preseason game. She just got but with nailed. the football. Yeah. Yes, with the football. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get anything by you. I know. <laughs> with the football, like I was like, oh my god. <laughs> that's what it was. No, I tweet. No, I seriously, I tweeted it out this morning. Of course, because why shouldn't you benefit from it? <laughs> no, I was taking up for her. I was saying that, like, you got to be badass as you sideline because she just got right back up. Was it like a Marsha Brady thing? I, I... It was. In oh, fact, my somebody nose. was saying, do we have to rename oh, her Marsha nose. Oliver? Yeah. Oh, my nose. Well, that's terrible. So if she's okay, she'll be back. She's fine. Oh, that's good. She's she's a boss. Yeah. No, she's good. She's good. I mean, listen, I mean, she uh, she's very pretty, though. It would uh, be a shame if she uh, ugly up that face. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying, you know, yeah. that's, that's, that's the most shallow of ways. I'm waiting yeah. for you to ask him if, if all the Raiders tried to hit on Pam. Uh, well, no, I'm sure they did. <laughs> yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm sure they did. But, again, I probably was left out of that loop if they did. Well, he's against interracial dating, so <laughs> he probably would have went yeah. with you. Or do you consider Jewish a race? <laughs> Didn't we talk you about do. that the other I, day? I, 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 you probably do, yeah. I thought we, we got a, the definitive answer on that. This comes up every time I'm on the show, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> every time. I think, is Ju- I Jewish, think it Jewish is, is a, race. a race. Judaism's a race. Yeah, we got a, or religion, the definitive tweet on it. It's the same thing. Okay. I, it's, a, I don't. <laughs> it's a race and a religion. Well, you don't want to say anything. To I understand she doesn't want to be controversial. A tweeter. She's going into an area career-wise where she doesn't want to be controversial because she's as successful as you can get. She has her own oh. network. <laughs> no, I don't. You are. You are your own yeah. network for college football, right? Not mine. College sports. I don't own it. Philado well, told VP. me you own it. He did? Yeah. Okay. Philado said, typical Jew owns a network. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> well, yeah. more accurately, typical Jew works for a network. No, well, Although, you, no honestly. No, wait, I, you're vice president, though, of this. I'm a vice president. I'm just. Of there's brand. Con- content, content and brand, and brand development. Good that's job, But that's Tom. great, though. That's great. Congratulations. That's cool. Thank you. I appreciate you're, it. You're a big-time executive. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm an exec. I, uh, thank you. But they want you on the air. It's only you most basically. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. so the folks who run Campus Insiders, they actually came to me and they said, That's hey, the name of Campus it's Insiders. called Campus Insiders. Right. It's a digital platform, campusinsiders.com. Okay. Show launches on Monday, which I'm kind of stoked about. But, yeah, they initially came to me and they're like, oh, you know, we're – we're looking for somebody to be like the the main anchor, which was flattering and it was really nice. But for the last couple of years, I've really, I don't know, you know how they talk about that seven year itch in business and you got to do something else. Sure. Well, I, I have the 17 year itch, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and at some point I should scratch it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd been sort of creating shows and pitching them around right. and just. I don't know, always had this entrepreneurial spirit that I wanted to do something with. I knew there's like a plan B out there somewhere. And it's a sports, which you love. Yeah, it's love football, sports. Mostly, yeah. So it's cool because I'll do, I'll do a daily show during the college football season and then during bowl, BCS Bowl Week. Well, one year of BCS right. Bowl Week and then whatever the hell they're going to call it. Well, the well, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. I'll do the three weeks of March Madness. And then the rest of the time, I get to work with our sales team and our marketing team and our business development team, talking about the type of programming we're doing, bringing in new sponsors, talking about cool brand extensions and stuff. 
So I, I have this massive learning curve, and I'm sitting at the bottom of it, which for me is awesome. Oh, you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm sure well, you uh, this, I'll I, try. Yeah, I think you'll be great at it. And so what do you think is going to happen, though, with college football? What, 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 what's it going to become here? Oh, it's it's going to become a playoff. It's going to become just And like, people will complain that there aren't enough teams. Now that we finally have one, they'll complain they want, you know, 16 teams, <laughs> however many teams well, they want. Well, what's your opinion? Do you, do you think they should keep it the way it is, or you like what it's doing? No, I hate the BCS. Oh, okay. I think it's ridiculous. Right. And and quite frankly, the, the Big East, them being an automatic qualifier before they blew it up for several years was just... That's stupid. You know, That's and... It's a joke. It, it, well, yeah. And so, you know, there are teams like the Boise States of the world, and you want those teams, albeit they may not be in conferences as strong as the SEC or the Pac-12, the Big Ten, the Big 12, whatever. Right. You want them to have an opportunity because, Artie, when you look at March Madness, what do we love so much about it? When when somebody upends sudden death. a three right. seed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sudden you, death. That you've and, never heard of. Yeah, exactly. But what's, so, what's bad about it is maybe a great team is out and you want to see them keep playing. But there's it doesn't compare. I think the excitement of the sudden death aspect is is a bigger attraction of that team getting ousted yeah. than not being in it. Well, you're never going to make anybody happy. You look at how dominant the SEC is. Yeah. You know, you can have two, three teams that are really national championship worthy. Yeah. And they're not going to get there because they're knocking each other off. Yeah. Right. So you're never going to make everybody happy, but I think the playoff is a step in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, listen, I mean, if it, uh, to me, the last couple of years, Alabama has been dominant to where no matter what happened, I think they would have rose to the top. You know, I think. Yeah. yeah but uh, well, but you're this is what everybody wanted. Right. I, and I think for the most part. It's an approximation. It's taking everyone's opinions into account and giving us a playoff. So you think this is the best possible scenario? I do. I I really like it. This I is do too. you know the plus one, the plus two. It, everyone's been pushing for for something along these lines. Right, but here's our reality too. There are the haves like the Alabamas and the LSUs and the Ohio States and the Oregons and now Stanford's. Yes! Have the ability. Can you that? Yeah, right? I they can't believe you mentioned Stanford. Stanford. But you know what? I actually think Stanford has a legitimate shot of They're winning the They're number four in the country heading yeah. in. When is this but, ever no, I mean, there hasn't been a ton of attrition outside of the wide receiver spot. But really, when your first option is a run and the second option is the run and the third option is the yeah. run, you're not that worried about it. But yeah. defensively, like, their front seven is so solid. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the, the point that I was going to make is you have certain teams that have the ability to reload. And Alabama's one of them and many of them are in the SEC so even though you have an Alabama where you lose you know nine starters to the NFL I was I was writing up a preview today and I likened Alabama to sharks because sharks can grow 24,000 teeth over the course of yeah, a lifetime they keep getting them in yeah. Alabama you lose a player you just regenerate Absolutely. another one and yeah. it's you right. know it, it is what it is and I don't think really with Nick Saban at the helm or Les Miles at the helm at LSU or what have you that's going to change but at least the playoff gives some of those have-nots more of an opportunity, which I think is great. No, I, yeah. I, it makes it's weird college football when you get a, a program like Alabama. You keep thinking to yourself, why? Yeah, well, what's to stop them from being dominant every year? You nothing. Know? Literally nothing. nothing. I mean, no. I guess well, if, if well, great players leaves. really want to go to like but, a different but, but part of the said, country to play. Or you know, they played LSU really tight, and and. LSU was winning, and I think it was in the last minute of the game, Yeldon had a 28-yarder caught a screen pass, and they they eked out the game. And Georgia nearly won the SEC championship, too. So it's not like yeah. they're blowing out opponents every right. single week. They're human, but they're pretty close they're to super great. human. Yeah, as great as, yeah. A, as a college team can get. Yeah. Uh, but you st Stanford's never been that good. How, how come I always think Stanford's well, the, no, like they've a great been, team? Pretty good. Uh, I think what's amazing now, Stanford was the only school in the country that I even had to write my name on a, an application for, and it wasn't <laughs> just that. and it wasn't just writing my name. I mean, it was six essays, and you had to go even Notre the whole, Dame or Penn State. No, no, no one really? asked me to write. No one asked me to do anything. That's it was just like Notre Dame. if you want to come here, yeah, right. I mean, Notre Dame, you're, you're in. Yeah. No kidding. That's the way it was. Stanford was the only place I had to get in through admissions before they could offer me a scholarship. Only school in the country that did that. They, their standards are so high. People talk about how Notre Dame's standards are high like Michigan, like, like Stanford's are. They're not. That's just the way it is. 
They'll okay, bring, well, they'll actually, bring in some JUCO the guys. Big they'll bring surprise. in. Well, well, Penn State and finding out what's going on there. I guess nothing surprised me. But, uh, Stanford, Stanford is doing this. They're number four in the country with incredible standards. And I think it's now, come, it's now come to the point that if you can ace the tests that yeah. they administer and you get good grades and you're good at football, you have to go there. Right. So they have a niche now. And I think it's the first time in a long time that's happened. Why wouldn't other schools start doing it that way then? Just like, I mean, you know, why wouldn't well, other schools? Well, because, because there's an inverse relationship between the, intelligence academic and, standard yeah. and, and the blue chip athletic. Yeah. It's also a beautiful part of the country. I hate to say it. Oh, it, it's sounds, gorgeous. it sounds Palo harsh, Alto? but if you're a kid mm. who grows up in poverty, and it could be like the, the redneck white kid who grows up on some lame farm somewhere or, mm. or, or, or like <laughs> coming from the inner city where, you know, it's well, the it corner. is the farm, you know. Uh, <laughs> different kind of I farm. love farms. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like farms. I'm saying, you know, like, and then you go to a beautiful part of the country, like Northern California, right? oh, and you see what the, what's out there. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, Absolutely. like, when I lived in L.A., I used to uh, drive up to PCH sometimes, I'd see that Pepperdine, that, oh. that oh. campus. The baseball field where yeah. there's palm trees, and, like, the outfield, there's the outfield, and yeah. then there are palm trees, and then there's the ocean. That's what I mean. Why, if you're a great baseball player from, you know, Newark, <laughs> <laughs> Would you not go? Yeah, that's where I want to go. But you know what's really cool about Stanford? Um, I, I I did a series for ESPNW, and I interviewed Condoleezza Rice because she was a very good athlete growing up. She was a figure skater. And she was telling me how she's the first one in the weight room, in the Stanford football weight room, every morning. And this was right around the time still? it was Andrew Luck's senior year. Yes, still. Really? And she does P90X, which is really awesome. But, you know, I, I said, I asked she her. She's a good go-getter. Uh, Condoleezza Rice? <laughs> right. No. no yeah. Condi was a huge fan of the football program. Well, she's a there. huge Browns fan. She's a diehard football fan, yeah. period. But I, you know, at one point I had asked her, who's more famous on campus, her or Andrew Luck? This was Luck's senior year. And she said, you know, n not to sound, you know, egomaniacal or anything, but there are so many famous people who go to Stanford yeah. that nobody pays Condoleezza Rice or Andrew Luck, and he mind, which well, is I think the that's converse. Her being, I think that's her being modest. But, but no, see, what I find really interesting, though, is case. that you, you take Andrew Luck and his relative anonymity in Palo Alto versus Johnny Manziel. Yeah, oh, no, that's yeah. a In difference. college No, I know, yeah. that's a big difference. Yeah. Their priorities yeah. are extremely uh, varied. Uh, but they're all different than your standard. Well, like who else? To tell, tell. Uh, football I'd love to hear. Like my my follow up question. You know, as a good reporter, I would have said to Condoleezza Rice, uh, name the celebrities you're vying for attention with uh, every day. Like, well, who are the other people? Oh, there's tons of there's tons of actors. I don't know who's Presidents, there now. Presidents, actors. I mean, when I was walking there, walking around the campus. Yeah, when I was there, there were tons of of you know child actors who are now in college. Like who? I mean. The president's daughter was going there. What child actors were there when you were there? Uh, this is the Kevin argument. Arnold. Let's Kevin name Arnold. names. All right. Oh yeah, Kevin uh, Arnold or Condoleezza Rice. <laughs> There's one nothing. His I'm ready not, one nothing over here. Not, <laughs> he's not really Kevin Arnold. That was the part that he played. Um, Kevin Arnold. What was and that? And then Jonathan from Who's the Boss. Okay. Was I'm there. still I'm still looking at Condoleezza Rice. There was another girl who was in Head of the Class who was there. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Which I again, I think when Bonnie asked her that, I think Condoleezza was being modest. I think she's being a politician. Well, because Andrew you, Luck, you can't first of all, Andrew Luck, though, I don't know. Then how do you explain the fact that there's 15,000 people coming to home games at times? I don't you know, know. People don't care as much school. about football there as they do in other places. But some guys are more unassuming than others. I think Andrew Luck's a pretty unassuming guy. I That's think AJ true. McCarron's a pretty unassuming guy. I think mm -hmm. Johnny Manziel, who tells everybody who will listen <laughs> that he's 20 years old and he's going to live his life. I was like, shut up. Screw yeah. the rest of you. Yeah. yeah he's not so unassuming. Right. So. Or it's like CeeLo Green, you'd notice a lot. Does he have a cat? <laughs> yeah, CeeLo Green. Uh, but my point is you're getting into this at the greatest time because I think it's a great time for college football in general, and I think it's a fun time for you to be doing this. But, you know, it's also a great time to be getting into digital media. And I was reading an article um, not that long ago that Netflix got nominated for 14 yeah, Emmys. Yeah, they're back. And I just I, I think that speaks volumes uh -huh. about people's willingness to consume content on their computers, on their smartphones, on their tablets, because everybody's on the run. And 
uh, Wi-Fi is pretty much everywhere you go. Right. And so to develop an all sports platform that is digital based and we don't just have studio shows, we have like exclusive game rights for the Mountain West Conference. And we did a whole slate of basketball for West Coast Conference last year. And we just did a deal with the Patriot League. And no, it's not the SEC and the Big Ten, and the Pac-12 and stuff though. like no, that. It's great. But there's an audience yeah. Yeah. and people people can't access that right now. So it's an exciting yeah. time. It it's an exciting time for your content and yeah. like, ways you're giving it. That's fantastic. And we're doing a lot of stuff with social media too. Yeah. So like everybody is on Twitter, yeah. Instagram now, and um, so right. we're tapping into that and, and hopefully bringing the fans in too. We're gonna take a break. I we're thought of another break. guy who was there. Oh, <laughs> Tiger Woods. Oh, okay, well there's a guy. That you haven't been. You all you've been doing is thinking the last two minutes. <laughs> I need just. I need one name. Well, Johnny one from name. head of the class. Whatever. If you now you name Janice. Guys, now you name Janice. Now you name the guy that I would look yeah, at. Tiger. Literally. That's right. a good one. We'll be back with uh, Bonnie Bernstein on the Artie Lang Show after these words.